Hello there, today we're going to be looking at how to model a shoe rack. Uh, it's going to be a uh, quite a basic um, shoe rack. There's going to be the two ends and then a couple of levels for the uh, for the shoes. So we're going to jump straight in. So it's just a new, um, a new part. And what we're going to do is we are going to work on the, uh, the base for the shoes. So first off, we're going to click on the top plane and we're going to uh, create the front and back struts of timber and we're going to dimension these uh, what we're also going to do is select the midpoint and then make this midpoint uh, coincident to the origin and then we can make both of these lines equal and then we're going to dimension this at 800 mil long and we're going to dimension it at 300 mil deep so straight off we've got our kind of parameters for the uh, uh, yeah for the shoe rack so then what we're going to do is we're going to create the sketch for the um, for the kind of outer pieces of timber that's going to be a small piece of timber I'm not too bothered about those initial dimensions because we can tidy them up uh, yeah dimension so we're going to make that 50 mil but what I want to do is I want to make this dimension to the outside because this is at the moment along that center line. So what we do is we click on leaders. Um, in fact, sorry, no, it's because I've clicked on that line that we can't do it from there. So if you click on the two arcs, uh, it's got 50 mil there, but we want it to be from the outside. So you click on leaders within the uh, command manager and then uh, arc condition and then select max for both arcs because you've got obviously two, you've got the top and the bottom one and you can now dimension it as an overall piece of timber. So I'm going to do that, say 50 mil. Um, we can do the same on this side as well. Uh, just click OK, change this dimension to max again, and then click 50 mil. OK, so we've got everything there uh, dimensioned up. Oh, no, we don't actually. So we don't have the actual thickness. Uh, that's going to be really simple, and that's going to be 25 mil. And that's going to be 25 mil as well. Okay, so the only thing that's not uh, allowing us to constrain is the fact that it's not constrained to the uh, original lines. So if I just click on this line and then pierce it, it will pierce the uh, oval to that line. So we're doing that for both sides. Click OK. What I want to do now is I want to sweep this timber along the, uh, the path. So we can click on Sketch Profile, click on this here, click on that line click OK so it's gone to uh, it's gone out to this point here however by clicking on this section here what it will do is it will make it go both directions so you can have it going the other way by clicking on this uh, this direction here or you can have it going in both directions so we'll click OK there and we've already got our frame kind of built up. So now we need to put some slats in going across and the slats going to go across are going to be drawn off this face here. So you click OK on there and we're just going to click on the slot again. So this time it's going to be an even smaller slot. So this is going to be 12.5 mil and we're going to make the overall length of it 25 mil from the arcs and then we're going to pull this in and what we're going to do is oh we need to edit that sketch uh, we're going to make this from the center of that line to the edge we're going to make that 40 mil Uh, sorry, no, we're going to make that 50 mil actually. 
and then we're going to do extrude and we're just going to go up to next however the only thing i'm not a big fan of is the fact that that timber is so far down so we can edit the sketch and by editing the sketch uh, instead of making it vertical to the origin, if I click on delete, we can make this collinear with the top. And I just need to delete that. There we go. That looks ever so slightly better. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pattern this along the edge. So if I click on bodies, uh, not body, sorry, I need to click on features. Click on features and then click on this extrusion. And we're going to do it at 50 mil. And we're going to repeat it all the way along. Or, so what you could do is there's 15, uh, there are 15 uh, instances there. You could increase that up to 100 and you could have 8. So I think we'll do that. I think that will look okay as well. So we've got our initial um, our initial rack. And what we're going to do now, we're going to do a linear pattern and we're going to pattern it up. And we're going to do this body because we want the whole thing to go up. And the distance that we want between it is 400 mil. However, we don't want eight instances, otherwise it's going to be a rather big shoe rack we're just going to have two so it's going to be two levels now we need to draw the end frame up and there's going to be two of the frames so really easily i'm just going to click on the end face of one of the racks and what i'm going to do is i am going to draw quite roughly a frame and it's going to go up and then across and then around and then all the way back down. Ooh. Make that point and this point vertical. And I'm going to make this from here, say 100 mil. Again, we can change the end condition of this so it is to the minimum this time so we can make that 100 and it's going to do it on the same there however we need to make this line um, coincident to the center of the slot sketch so we can just do a point and then select the construction line make that coincident and then from the top here we'll have it going 100 mil from uh, this edge so again, by clicking on this section here, click OK, we want to make this arc minimum and then make that 100 mil. And then the rads at the top, we're going to make those equal as well. Click on equal and then give that a dimension and we'll dimension that at 50. So it's quite nice and rounded. So, oh, okay, so the reason that that wasn't working is because this uh, arc wasn't tangent to the uh, vertical line. So we'll just click on that. That can happen, especially if what you do is you hover back onto the point to change it into an arc. Um, sometimes it doesn't make it tangent. So we've got our uh, overall kind of like end profile here. So we're going to click OK. Um, sorry, actually what I do want to do is... I want to change all of these lines uh, from construction lines so I can just click on that sketch and uh, no I can't actually I thought I would have been able to have changed all of the lines so I'm just gonna click them all and then on the uh, command manager untick for construction exit that sketch now I'm going to do another sweep around this uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a plane and I'm going to select the point here and the vertical leg of the end. Click on the plane sketch 
go normal to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle. Not connect it, doesn't have to be connected. And then do that at 25 by 75. And then I'm going to do a point on the mid uh, the midpoint of that line. Make that coincident to our, uh, to our sketch there. And then exit that, and we're just going to do a simple sweep again. So we're going to use this sketch as the profile, and we're going to use this sketch as the path, and have that drawn up like so. And then to push this around onto the other side, all we're going to do is select the right plane, click on the body, and then mirror this. Now what's happened is is it's merged the body because we're doing it under a solid, uh, we're doing a kind of, uh, what's the name I'm looking for? Sorry, I can't think of it. We're doing solid modeling. So it'll merge it as soon as you do a feature, it'll try to merge it into the existing one. So if you untick merge, it will basically create a multi-body part. So we've already got the three bodies because we've got two racks there and then we've got the end. So now we can use the mirror. So I'll click on right plane body to mirror, use that end, click OK, and there we go. So we've got a kind of very basic uh, shoe rack. Um, uh, from this, you could then uh, translate that into weldments if you needed to. So you could create a weldment for the uh, all the two different types of timber for the rack, and then you could have a weldment for this end piece here. OK, very basic tutorial, some basic features, just showing you the uh, the ways of creating uh, to make a shoe rack uh, so yeah i hope you found that interesting uh don't forget to subscribe for more uh, if you like the video drop us uh drop us a like that'd be brilliant and don't forget to comment as well if there's anything you'd like to know if you've got any questions about the tutorial i will see you soon